So guys, Chicago State University have finally succumbed to pressure from Nigerians and they have come out to confess that of a truth, the certificate that Tinubu issued to INEC is not from them. They have come out to say we don't know where the certificate is coming from. See the way People's Gazette reported it. U.S. court adjourns article records case as Chicago University denies knowledge of certificates Tinubu submitted to INEC. The United States District Court for Northern District of Illinois on Tuesday adjourned ruling on a Sabina application for Bola Tinubu's records from Chicago State University shortly after the institution denied knowledge of a certificate the Nigerian president submitted to the country's Electoral Commission, INEC, to run for office. I want us to listen to what their lawyer told the judge yesterday. Listen to these guys. So uh, if a deposition is compelled of my client here, and the issue is, was the June 22nd, 1997 uh, diploma that President Tinubu submitted into evidence in Nigeria or, or offered to the, whatever that election agency there is, my client, is, is that authentic? My client's going to say, we don't know. Um, and we do not have his actual diploma to compare it to. So this is what the school said. The certificate Tinibu issued to INEC is not from them. And after what they said yesterday in court, today on TVC News, Tinibu and his supporters sent someone to go and say that he also graduated from Chicago State University and that he was Tinibu's classmate. Can you imagine this, guys? The school said that they did not issue certificates to you and you are coming out to tell us to show us your classmates. That's not what Nigerians are asking for. They are asking for your certificate. Did you get the certificate from the school or not? I want us to watch this video from Tinibu supposed classmates. Watch this video, guys. Uh, Mr. Drew Jai Ogunsoya is a public affairs analyst. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for coming. But I guess the other thing that is of interest here is that you happened to be in that same school with him. Yes. Uh, Chicago State University, mm -hmm. right? Um, right. So he studied uh, accountancy, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, what did you study, sir? Accounting. You were in the same department. You were in the same uh, accounting in the same department. Yes, yes. You were in the same class. In class. Now, now tell me about this because um, as you know there, there are those who seek to make the case that um, uh, he wasn't, uh, he didn't, in spite of the fact that that university has indeed provided them with evidence that yep he was one of our students, he took a degree in accounting, uh, but uh, people can still go ahead and do what they will do, this is the nature of um, I suppose uh, law and all of that, they can try. But, I'm interested because um, one of the things we hear is that uh, President Tinubu, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, as he then was known, we, we don't know any, anybody who went to school with him. Well, uh, here you are live in the studio. You actually did go to school with him. Yes. Now tell me about that. Um, did you meet in school or were you like buddies before going into the university, the application? Tell me about that whole scenario because it will be interesting, so to speak. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yes, uh, we met in the school, Chicago State University, mm -hmm. and we were in the same department, College of uh, Accounting, Business and Administration, with major in uh, accounting. Yes, yes. With, with major in accounting. And we were in the same class together, and we graduated. He did attend the university, Chicago State University, and he graduated in ah. 1979. Okay, as you did. As I did. Uh, in in you know, 1979. 1979. Yes, so I'm here to testify that he did attend the university and he was a good student. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you were classmates with him and uh, I suppose, you know, uh, your supervisors, your lecturers have testified to that in the certificate uh, that was uh, issued to him. But when you were hearing all this um, noise, I think is the way to put it, that, oh, no, uh, we, we were going to contest whether or not he went to uh, uh, Chicago State University. What were you thinking uh, when, you, when you heard that? Yeah, people were being mischievous in the first place because he was a governor for eight years. 
somebody who worked for mobile for several years and, and you're contesting that he didn't go to university. How is that possible? I mean, I, can, I cannot imagine how that is possible. All of a sudden, from nowhere, the president now has a classmate from Chicago State University. Can you imagine this, guys? You didn't say anything all this while the Nigerians have been asking. Okay, let's see your classmates. Even when Peter will be advised students to stay with their classmates, you did not come out then to say, okay, I am also the classmate to President Bola Tinibu. No, until the school came out to say that the certificate Tinibu issued to INEC is not from them. That's when you could come out to now see that you are Tinibu's classmate. But that's not what Nigerians are concerned about. We are asking for his certificate because there's a possibility that someone can start going to a school and then drop out. There's a possibility that someone might reach maybe the final year in school and not complete your education. There's a possibility you have classmates, you have people that know you, but the guarantee what people will look out and know that you are a graduate of that school is your certificate is your certificate and that's what nigerians are asking from the president show us your certificate and then you brought one we know now that the one you brought and showed to us is not from the school because the school has denied that they did not give you the certificates you are parading they did not give you the certificates you submitted to INEC so that is what we are after and reacting to this on twitter this person here said the Chicago State University lawyer said in open court that they can't authenticate this certificate. Where did Tinibu get his certificate from? Jump paraded Mesoma for certificate forgery, but the judiciary exonerated Tinibu of the same crime. Another Another person here reacted and said a very big shame to the so-called giant of Africa as it is now on record that Chicago State University was not able to authenticate the school certificate of the ECOWAS chairman Bola Tinibu why so-called judges are judging nonsense to it. Hmm. This person here said Chicago State University is struggling to review the certificate Tinibu claimed he got from their school but Renu Omokri told us during the electionary campaign that the university showed him Tinibu's certificate. Reno is the devil's incarnate. Hmm. And that's true. This particular case and even the presidential election petition tribunal has revealed so many persons that we don't really know their true color in Nigeria. You were busy covering up for the president. You said that the school showed you his certificate and issued you letter and all of that. And at the end of the day, this same school have come out to say that the certificate that Tinibu gave to INEC is not from them. Reacting to this, another person said, Things that shocked Honorable Judge Jeffrey T. Gilbert, the judge handling the article versus Chicago State University and Tinibu Certificate racketeering case in Chicago at the court proceedings. One, he was shocked when he saw the college documents Tinibu used to gain admission into Chicago State University. Two, he was shocked too when he saw the subpoena copy of the certificates gotten from Chicago State University and the one Tinibu gave to INEC. Three, he was shocked to see certificates were signed by two different persons and he had to ask whether Chicago State University has two precedents. Four, when he asked for the authentication of Tinibu's certificate and the Chicago State University lawyer declined the authenticity, he had to ask where did Tinibu get this certificate from? Hmm. And that's a very legit question. So where did the president get his certificate from? And this matter is already very obvious. When the school that you claim issued you certificate are coming out to tell you that we did not issue the certificate from to you, it's very obvious that there is a certificate forgery. It's very obvious. And this were the things that our judges manipulated their way from. They didn't want to give us the correct judgment concerning this. Another person here reacted and said, if you go to my primary school to ask for my academic record, they will gladly provide it within 24 hours. But Chicago State University cannot even authenticate the certificate Tinibu claimed he got from the school. A serial liar and forger cannot be my president. Hmm.
We are ready to cooperate, Chicago State University lawyer tells George Gibbard as he complained that the Tinibu Certificate Saga has turned his client's institution into a punching bag for Nigerians and has given the university a bad image. And that's how it's supposed to be. What people are asking for he is our president. Tell us the truth. Is the certificate from you? That's the simple questions Nigerians have been asking. And at the end of the day, you refuse. You locked all your social media accounts so that people will not have access to it. And now you are crying. Now you are saying you are willing to cooperate. All we need from Chicago State University is the truth. And we are happy now that the truth is already coming out because they have already said now that the certificate is not from them. Now we know that we are making progress. And we will not stop until we get justice in this matter, until the people that Nigerians really voted for get into power, until the Supreme Court give us tribunal for the judgment they gave to Nigerians on Wednesday 6th of September 2023 saying that they gave judgment but not justice. I want us to watch this video guys. Tribunal, you know, the court of appeal. Actually it came as a surprise not only to myself but to all and sundry, all Nigerians. Way many Nigerians, both at home and the diaspora. You know, for me, I was in court that particular day because I'm one of the lawyers representing our party and our, our candidate. So, like I said, I was disappointed because they actually the court came out and uh, the judges they gave a judgment, but they were not they did not render justice to the matter. So I can see that judgment as a judgment in error. We know that law is dynamic and is uh, mutable. The law keep on developing, and the court, like in law, we say that whatever is the pronouncement of the court is what is the law. But then everybody looks up to the court as the last hope of the common man. It's a temple of justice. And even the judges who are the members of the bench and even the lawyers who are equally members of the bar. We're all members of, you know, pre, uh, we are all, you know, uh, in the temple of justice, we are ministers. But especially those of the judges, they are seen as uh, they should be above board because they are looked upon, you know, as uh, arbiters. And when they come out to give judgment, they should quickly look at the facts of the matter, look at the evidence I do, and then arrive at their judgment. And that's why most times when you see a judgment of a court, there are rules, there are things you need to identify, what we call the obita. The obita dictum is what actually informs the court to arrive at their decision, or the star right decisive. But these things we are lacking in that judgment, because looking at the what I saw in the court that day, everybody sees it. You saw there's issues. Need to be addressed. We talk about evidence, even you know, appearing as if they were you know aligning with the respondent, whether they were taking side, the way they reacted whenever there is a case, an issue that concerns the respondent, they were there as if they were praising the respondent. But when it concerns the petitioners, which my party is one of them, PDP, they reacted vehemently, you know, with anger, as if there was even an, one of the judges were saying. Do, do we do we expect them the court to manufacture evidence but i saw during the proceedings there was overwhelming evidence that were tendered by my party and even the labor party even concerning a uh, qualification you know the respondent was not even qualified at initio from what the evidence tendered by my own party showing that the forgery the certificate forgery that was there even the matter is still pending in a court in uh, in america showing that there was for future you know, drug for future, money laundry, you know, that involved dog, drug. And then I saw the court. The court supposed to be a court, like I say, a temple of justice. So they would have, even if they don't want to, uh, you know, rule on it, but they should have stood up to condemn that fact that somebody that's going to be a president of Nigeria would have been had a case in, in court in America concerning or involving drug proceeds and they was indicted. And he forfeited that money. They were saying, like some of them were saying, it was not a criminal matter. Whether civil or criminal, but at the end of the day, there was forfeiture. And in law, that's what we call plea bargain. When you forfeit something, you're trying to secure your, 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 you know, secure your, uh, your freedom, and you had to forfeit something. The court would have risen up to condemn that particular act. 
even if at the end of the day they're talking about transmission i saw when the court was even saying that uh, uh, INEC has the right to transmit or, or collect results uh, any, in any manner they want, which is in, in, not in order. Because the Electoral Act was amended in 2022, and the innovation of that uh, amendment of that act was that uh, you know, inclusion of electronic system of uh, voting and the uh, transmission of results. And that was why the federal government spent billions of naira, even procuring the INEC was giving so much money to procure the beavers mentioned. What would have been the essence of the, 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 the need of bringing beavers? Because the beaver was to capture the voter, accredit the voter, and then capture that voter and the votes after the result has been collected. You capture the result and transmit it to the IRA of uh, INEC. Then at the end of the day, INEC said that there was a glitch. They did not transmit. And that body of proof should have rested upon them to prove the unreasonable that why that glitch. So we expected the court, and even Nigeria expected that court, to rise up and say, no, we must strengthen our democracy. And that democracy, why should we? Because the court has passed. There was that, you know, uh, anomaly when we collect results uh, manually. There were people who can manipulate the results, because if you collect it from the polling unit, before you get to either local government collection center, or maybe finally to the data collection center, you see that people can impugn some uh, figures in there, just like what happened. We tender documents, and even Labour Party tender documents from INEC, that most of the resource sheets were blurred, no figures were seen. Even the, where the, the ones that were seen, they saw them, TPEX in them, there were TPEX on them, like in River State. These were things that happened and occurred, that took place in that election. We expected the court to condemn it, so that our younger generations who are coming up tomorrow, the future generation, can have confidence in both in INEC, both in the judicial system, because if you don't do anything, you say the INEC has a right to transmit. You are, you are, I mean, you are finished. The Nigeria is finished. Then talk about that. You talk about the fact that okay, INEC made promises. They said they were going to transmit. They were going to, and they endorsed their promises. Those are things we expected that they will rule on it. Then coming to that, uh, twenty-five percent of the FCT is a constitutional matter, and court supposed to be a court of uh, legal direction, you know, in order to extract, you know, develop and uh, more of our law. You are talking about the constitution. The action in section one thirty-four, which provided for FCT, but he said that for you to be, you know, announced as a winner of a presidential election, that you must secure twenty-five percent in at least two thirds of all the thirty-six stakes in the federation, and and that conjunctive conjunctive word and the FCT. That makes it mandatory. But the judges, the court now ruled and was even taking FCT to be like one of the states of the Federation, making it 37 states, which, as far as I'm concerned, was in error. Because there's rules of interpretation in law. We have the rules we call the literary rule. That's, you have to interpret literally whatever word you see in that constitution. We have what we call the golden rule. You know, the court has to use golden rule. But the final one is the mischievous rule, the mischief rule. You use the mischief rule to know what is the intent or the intention of the drafters of the constitution. Because the members of the National Assembly, the legislative, and when they make laws, we are not there. You didn't know what they want to cure. There must be a defect they want to cure. But when you want to read the constitution, the law says you read it in what we call community reading. Go to section one of the constitution. It provided that Nigeria should be a federation consisting of uh, states and the FCT, the Federal Capital Territory. This is in Section 1. That Nigeria should be a federation consisting of states and the FCT. So when you are not talking about making FCT a part of state, it did not, and it went further. Even if you go further, there's a place it provided in the Constitution that provided about the 36 states, even defined them and made them, there was schedule, there's a schedule for 36 states. And it came to local government, it brought 774 local government and defined them. So there's no place you define the FCT as a, as, a, as a state. So when you are reading, you do what we call community reading. Not only that section 134, you now said the yeah, FCT is now regarded as a state. Because there's no governor in FCT. There's no senator in FCT. Uh, it's only one senator. There are not three, three senators in FCT. So all these things, we have looked at them. As far as I'm concerned, the court, has given, the court of first instance has pronounced given a, a judgment. But one good thing and one beautiful thing is that we still have a window, you know, that uh, there's still a, 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 a door open to for appeal, 
which is to appeal to Supreme Court, which is the highest court of the land. And why it is important that Supreme Court, apart from adjudicating the matters and ruling on you know cases, they are a court of uh, legal direction. They direct, and when they direct that this is the law, it becomes the law. So that's why we are saying that the justices, eminent jurists, they did well. They did what they are best because human beings, we are human beings. Anybody is uh, prone to mistake and whatever. But I know why we are talking about this. Democracy is, you know. Define the will of the people. That's what is the people. And for the people talking about democracy, you look at the mindset, the mood of this nation, the mood of the people. Nigerians say that that election that occurred that took place in 25th uh, February 2023 was undermined, was rigged, was manipulated. That it is clear. Even the uh, foreign observers, you, um, a, a, what do you call it, United um, European Union came up with their report and they were so vehement in condemning that that uh, election was uh, not done properly well. And the people came and was reacting, you know, condemning the uh, uh, European Union. But these same European Union are people who support Nigeria, both in our election, they provide funds, even in other NG, MDS uh, in the, uh, uh, activities. They, they still have to assist Nigeria and they provide funds. And these are people you brought as foreign observers with our local observers. They came up with a report, a well detailed report telling us that that election was undermined, you know, was manipulated. And you are trying to jettison this. It's not good. You need to look at something that is going to bring for a future generation, leave a legacy for a younger generation. That's what I'm telling you. The PEPT justices discarded all the evidences that was tabled before them by both the Labour Party and PDP, no minding what this would tell on our future generation generation no minding where our future that's the future of nigeria is headed to i'm so happy that people are actually talking about this that nigerians are not keeping quiet concerning the injustice that was perpetrated by the presidential election petition tribunal the court is meant to be the last hope of the common man but we didn't see that play out in the case of the presidential election petition tribunal the common men in nigeria the poor masses we are depending on them nigerians if foreigners were justice in they went ahead to uphold the president no minding what Nigerians are saying, no minding that the evidence that was presented before them is so glaring, even to the man on the street, even to the layman, is so that the evidence that was presented. As regards to the 25 percent for the FCT, listen to this. To look at it, the states are well defined. That. Territorial area where defined, in the terms are where defined. If you come to the issue of the federal local governments contained in all the states where defined, and then the constitution not pretend in federal capital to say they have a local government, say they have six area council, specifically defined in the second schedule of what is the federal capital. Then if you go back to section 133B of the constitution, with these with presidential election, which comes before section 134, you will see that a person who is a single candidate at the election is still stipulated to win 25% in two thirds of all the states and federal capital. And it goes to say that if somebody is not elected in accordance with the constitution, Fresh nomination should be. That one has gone further. Not talk of fresh election. It's a fresh nomination should be taken. That is how serious it is. If you marry that provisions, you'll be able to arrive at the true intention of section 134, subsection 2. You must look at section 133. Certain, because the person is just a single candidate. Yet, the stipulations so you must get to ten of yes or no <coughs> in the 32, uh, two tens of the 36 states of the Federation and federal capital. 
And if he is not elected, in, in, there's no winner in, in, in accordance with the provisions of Section 133, fresh nomination, not election, fresh nomination should be conducted. Coming danger for Tinubu waiting to happen. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell. Please give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to others. Please don't forget to.